Thanks for tuning in this week. This episode is the second half of my interview with Sharon Pierce and Kimberly Gordon, two CRNAs and friends of mine who are helping educate other nurses on how to get involved in local, state, and federal politics. Enjoy. Welcome to the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones, and I'm so excited that you're here. The Plan B CRNA podcast is the only show made specifically for nurse anesthetists who are exploring options outside of their traditional career paths. This is the place to expand your mind and your goals as we uncover new ways to produce side income together. Join me for some honest, unscripted discussions with other CRNAs who are transforming their financial lives. This episode is brought to you by On Call Capital. On Call Capital is dedicated to educating CRNAs and other healthcare providers about investing outside of the traditional stock market. On Call Capital also provides opportunities for you, yes, you, to create passive income and generational wealth while also lowering your taxable income through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure you do that right now so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks so much for joining me today. And now on with the show. What was that like going to in, into this program and getting started with some of these ideas that you've had? So it was very interesting because the the woman that interviewed Sharon is now our colleague um, in what we're doing now, Lisa Summers. Uh, she was involved in ANA um, in their policy shop and actually was responsible for Sherpa Ng, the Affordable Care Act through Congress on the nursing side. Um, okay. She was the one who coordinated the nursing effort. So she has, I always like to say, you know, Sharon's got this great Rolodex and the only one that only person I've ever met that rivals Sharon's Rolodex is Lisa. I mean, mm -hmm. she is, she had this phenomenal experience. And even before we started our program, we met um, we met, I was actually, it was so funny because I was sitting in the state Capitol on the phone with Lisa and, um, Sharon, and we were talking about what did we want our project to look like? What, we, what do we want our projects to look like if Yale, you couldn't work together? So we each had to do one, but we changed that too. <laughs> yeah, Good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't think two people have ever done three projects, no. but that's exactly that's what, what we, we ended up doing. Oh, yeah. fun. Okay. Yeah. So, so well, yeah. actually five projects. So yeah, you can't, yeah, if you get them all. But the oh my interesting goodness. thing was what we had written about and what we wanted to do, Lisa's like, yeah, that's all great. But nurses talk about this stuff all the time. They talk about um, access to care. They talk about uh, advocacy, but not politics, not running mm -hmm. for office. So let's explore that. Let's think about what you two want to do with that. So we ended up and then. Along the way, not long after that, I'll say, I think it was December as we were um, meeting, we were at school, we went to New York City for mm -hmm. a Yale alumni event. But anyway, the dean was going to be there. And um, at that point, we had decided that we would each do our own projects that would inform a third project, which was creating the very first candidate school for nurses and midwives. Mm -hmm. And so um, Sharon embarked on her project, I embarked on my project, and we took pieces of that to create this candidate school that Yale had graciously agreed to pilot. Okay. Very cool. So how has that process gone? Like as far as the, you know, the actual school itself, at what point are you along in that process? Do you have people that have come in and started or completed a program yet? How, how has that looked? Well, we had designed a three and a half day intensive that was to be held at Yale in May of unfortunately 2020. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Oh, yeah, we had 14 faculty members that we had lined up and okay. into graciously donating their time um, and just do it for expenses only. We were going to be funded through uh, the the dean was going to underwrite the first candidate school. She was even in Davos and spoke about our candidate school, which was amazing that she did that. But COVID, of course, happened. 
Um, so we were unable to hold the candidate school. But so then we had a whole new project that Yale told us we had to do in order to meet our graduation requirements. So we did a two hour webinar with our nurse faculty, which included Bethany Hall Long, who's the first nurse lieutenant governor in the country, Erin Murphy, the first nurse who ran for governor in this country, and Gail mm. Adcock from our home state of North Carolina, the first APRN. Mm. And of course, we were very disheartened. And here we go from this great three and a half day intensive to, oh yeah, we're gonna be doing a two hour webinar. Yeah. So we we adapted, we were flexible and we adapted even our survey, the surveys that we were going to use. And believe it or not, we had some exciting, exciting uh, results that even two hours, Mm -hmm. it increased people's interest in running for office and uh, so many things, being more active in their community, being more politically active, more active in their uh, professional associations. So even in two hours, we could get people to think the thought and be more interested in running for office. Well, it seems like almost that would be the start of a drip campaign, if you will, because you would get you know three and a half days is quite a commitment for people to make to say, oh, well, yeah, I'm going to put in the time and the money and the the, you know, travel and and all that kind of stuff to to do this. And I know I want to do this. Whereas if you're just trying to, you know, get somebody's interest and and mm-hmm. gauge their interest, like, well, sure, I'll give up a couple hours on a, you know, a, a weekday or whatever, you know, and, and or on a weekend and and just learn a little bit more about it. It's not going to cost me anything. And and I could sit in my home and, you know, watch on on the computer. So I can see how that would be very successful, um, depending on how it was structured. So so how have you guys taken it from there? So I I just want to back up because the interesting thing about uh, we had 47 nurses from 26 states who applied because we had opened the admission process before we learned that we couldn't do it. Mm We had opened the admissions process in December of 2019, Mm -hmm. um, admitted 47 students. Our goal was 50 and we hadn't closed it. The school had to be canceled. So we had 47 nurses that were interested that we admitted 26 states and they were from all sorts of different backgrounds. There were um, BSNs, there were APRNs, there were um, nurses who were public health nurses. I mean, from every single background. Mm -hmm. So that was eye-opening to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then after we had to shut down the candidate school, we still had people who were learning about it, Mm -hmm. who were coming to the website and saying, I want to be a part of this. When you do this, I want to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. And so by the time we did the webinar in February of this year, We have now a mailing list of 100 nurses who are interested in this. And again, Mm -hmm. you talk about that drip, drip, drip. So now we're um, not just nurses who want to run for office, but nurses who want to run a campaign Mm -hmm. of somebody who's either going to run a nurse who's going to run for office or a nurse friendly candidate. Mm -hmm. Um, But what Sharon found out in her um, project is that what we saw in the webinar, which is that even if they go to these things and they decide, nurses decide, oh, running for, running for office isn't for me, they're more involved. They mm-hmm. want to be more involved, whether it be in politics or policy or the professional organization. So slowly and, and through things like this, and thank you for the opportunity, we're reaching people to get that word out there. Mm-hmm. Um, to even bring up the idea because most nurses don't even think about the idea that they could run for office, let alone yeah. how to go about doing that. Yeah, for sure. So if, if somebody is interested, then what are the steps that they need to start taking to, you know, maybe get you maybe start venturing into, you know, dipping their toe in the waters and, and whatnot? Well, one of the things that we found with the webinar is that our nurse faculty encourage them to get involved in their communities. I think that mm-hmm. that's what you're asking. So that people know who you are to kind of get your, your name out. So people showed us that they were going to do just that. But to continue on our path, 
in what has happened now. We have a closed Facebook page hmm. um, that if people are interested in or think they're interested in running for office or supporting nurses, they can find us. We're Healing Politics. And um, we have not dropped the idea of having the candidate school. And we are currently working with an academic institution and hopefully are going to iron out our relationship where we will hold the candidate school next spring. Very so cool. Hopefully That's so we'll exciting. Very exciting. Um, once we get it, everything ironed out, um, when we can kind of let the cat out of the bag. Yeah. 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 Well, and I'll definitely, we'll have a link to the Healing Politics Facebook page um, in the show notes so that people can can click on that and learn more information and join your group if if they are interested. But, um, you know, I guess, you know, the one of the things we haven't really touched on um, is the why. Why nurses are so needed in public office, in communities to be involved in policy making. What does the, nobody really wants to see how the sausage is made, but, you know, nurses are an important part of that, or at least they should be um, when it comes to policy making. So why is that? Why, um, why is it so important for nurses to be involved? Well, it is incredibly important to have nursing voices at the table because number one, we are the person who is closest to the patient. Um, so even talking from a healthcare standpoint, um, nurses understand patients and they understand patients' families and they understand their communities through those patients. So we have a very unique perspective on our communities and our healthcare system, first of all. Second of all, the more voices that you get involved in making public policy, the better that public policy is gonna be and the more unintended consequences we can avoid. So right now, our state and our federal legislatures are made up of lawyers, business people, and politicians. Those are the three most populous um, professions in any state um, legislature and our federal legislature. Nurses fall into the other category. Um, so we don't even know how many nurses serve on the state level because there aren't enough to measure it. There aren't enough to even create an occupational category that the National Council of State Legislatures can measure. That being said, if the pandemic has showed us anything, it is how nurses' voices have been missing from healthcare policy and lawmaking for decades before this happened. Mm -hmm. And so for any nurse that's sitting there saying, you know, you get pressed, these policies come down, CRNAs, uh, CRNAs aren't immune to this, of course, but I'm thinking about my time back at the bedside that these policies are coming down and these regulatory agencies are saying, you have to do this, you have to do that. We're always complaining about it, but we can do something about it. And this is the way to do that. And we need to do it, whether it is pushing the button, yes, no or advocating for the people, um, the advocating around the people that are pushing that button, yes, no, mm -hmm. they need to hear from us and they want to hear from nurses. Um, and no time has that been truer than now. Everybody loves a nurse, but they have no idea what we do. Well, it's yeah. time for us to claim our power. I mean, you have, healthcare is a huge issue to voters, to everybody, but yet, um, all of those decisions are being made by people who are not even in healthcare. Like Kimberly said, lawyers, businessmen, mm -hmm. uh, and political people have no idea about healthcare. Now, yeah. Oh, I was going to say businessmen are going to make decisions about healthcare that are are expense based, and we've seen that. I think you know in healthcare in the last twenty years, it's become much more business focused than compassion focused. You know, it's all about saving a buck instead of saving a life. And that's a big, big problem that we have in healthcare in our country. And and it's because we've allowed insurance companies to run everything. Everything's based on what an insurance company is going to, you know, reimburse instead of what the healthcare professionals on the front lines think should actually be done for a certain patient. But above and beyond that, nurses have all the skills. I mean, they have the knowledge. They just 
they have just not put together that they have all the skills that already that they need to to serve as a legislator. We we are the best collaborators, conflict managers. We listen. I mean, just think of everything that you do every single day. Work well in a team. Jesus, wouldn't all these things be great in Washington? Wouldn't all these things be great at, at the state level? We have everything we already need. We just need the desire and uh, and the wherewithal to go forward and, and to claim our seats at the table. And that's what we want to do with this initiative that we now have. And to be able to train people to, to win, to win. I mean, we didn't know what a win number was. We never sat and calculated a win number. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's pretty important, <laughs> but we didn't even know what it was. And so we need to, to educate um, nurses, give them the desire. Well, Kimberly's got the real spiel down, inspire, motivate. <laughs> what are the, uh, inspire, motivate, recruit, train. That's it. There you go. That, that's, that's our mission um, to do that. And we hope that your listeners will join our cause. Yeah, well, I love it. I, you know, there's got to be some guidance involved. You can't get to to where you want to be without somebody guiding you along that way. I mean, and, and we know it from our days in school where we had mentors who helped us get to where we wanted to be. This is just another step in a, a different field, a different direction, but ultimately one that I agree with you. Nurses' voices need to be heard, and we have all of the skills necessary to to be successful in these kinds of positions and make a real difference for people's lives. So and we I, didn't know it at the time, Bobby, but we are the poster child for nurses in office. You were talking about independent. Uh, you're an independent. I'm a Democrat. Mm -hmm. Sharon's a Republican. Mm -hmm. We have learned from the tiny amount of research that's out there that nurses work across the aisle. They get stuff done. Yeah. So when they get elected, they're better elected officials mm -hmm. because of what we bring to the table. Yeah. And when we get into elected office, people want more of us in elected office because we're getting stuff done. And that is a big change from the um, environment that we're in right now with gridlock at the federal level where everything's moved to the state level. Um, so it's it's crucial that we're in there and that yeah. we're involved. Yeah. Exactly. Well, another one of our projects that we started <laughs> while we were at Yale, um, we were initially told, well, do a little 20 minute documentary on nurses in elected office. So we did all of this research, all of this work. Um, we wrote a, a paper, a, a treatment, a, a paper it's called a treatment for that. And then Yale says, well, we can't give you any help through Yale Broadcasting. Figure it out. Oh, so fun. Yeah, you, you know what? We're pretty used to this now. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. So we're going to figure this out. Well, Kimberly had the brilliant idea because uh, we're in North Carolina. Um, the UNC School of the Arts, one of the top filmmaking schools in the country. So Kimberly cold emails um, somebody in the film school at UNCSA. And within two hours, he emails her back and loves this idea. So long story short, we embarked on this documentary and we are currently filming it yesterday. We, this is our week of vacation to kind of work on our concepts and work on other things, but we had to leave our vacation and we were in Washington, D.C. a couple of days ago, filmed Eddie Bernice Johnson, who's the first nurse to serve in Congress. Oh, and cool. then we drove to Delaware and we interviewed Bethany Hall Long, who is the first nurse lieutenant governor in the country, and she will be running for governor in a few years. 
So, um, and policy, we interviewed yeah. policy people, also Absolutely. nurses that were doing policy in congressional offices. Yes. While we were. Yes, but we've yeah, done right. over 20 some interviews. Mm -hmm. We're learning a whole new skill set. We do something called logging. Once these interviews are done, we have to go back and watch them and and we at, we log as we go along. Oh, this is an important point. We want this in the documentary for editing. So we're learning a whole new skill set for that. So just be prepared. We're hoping it's going to air come out next fall. We're hoping to be able to have help from nurses all over the country to do screenings. And um, it's going to be submitted to festivals. They've already got the festivals. And some of the CRNAs helped fund this because we did an Indiegogo. Indiegogo. Indiegogo <laughs> funding and CRNAs helped fund um, part of this documentary and their names will get to be in the credits when it's done. And so we have learned a tremendous amount, but above and beyond that, what is interesting is we interviewed uh, three or four political scientists, three, four political scientists, very well known in uh, the political uh, poli sci literature on candidate emergence, uh, gender related politics, um, one who actually did uh, about the only re research that's ever been done on campaign schools. And every single one of them said the same thing. Gosh, why haven't we thought of nurses being in office before? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was the, a duh moment for all of them. Duh, why didn't we think of that? Because, and I want to just throw a couple of numbers out here. Nurses are one in every 10 voters. Right? Every 10 voters in the United States is a nurse. Wow. We have 4 million nurses. So if you think about that, if nurses actually flexed their political muscle, we wouldn't be in the situation that we're in with powerlessness in our hospital systems or our state or federal legislatures. Um, I think we uh, physicians outnumber nurses five to one. And in Congress, there are exactly the opposite. Um, there are five physicians for every nurse in Congress, more than five physicians oh, for every nurse. nurse so in nurses out outnumber physicians oh, number, five yeah, to one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, but it's in, the reverse in, in Congress. Yeah. yeah. So okay. we, this is, it's doable and it wouldn't take, it's not a heavy lift. I mean, it's yeah. really not a heavy lift. We have the numbers and the ability to do this. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, I always get juice talking to you guys. I, <laughs> this is so much fun. Well, what's interesting in, in my research, um, the physicians have been conducting a candidate school since the 1970s, and they have educated over 1,500 physicians to run for office and their spouses. Mm -hmm. Wow. And ACOG has been doing it. Everybody else has been doing it, basically, yeah. and, except for us. So this will be some, uh, this will be historical whenever we have the first one. Um, so. Yeah, well, and I think that's, you know, so you mentioned something there about like the spouses getting involved. And I mean, we've had people in our state who had a spouse who was a CRNA or a spouse who was a nurse. And so, uh, you know, I and I think it makes a difference to to talk about how you can still be a bit of an influencer while being a nurse and not necessarily having to be the person whose face is on the, the banner. You know, and, and whereas you're participating in a campaign, you're just getting active in your community. If you get to know people, they actually listen to you because you have knowledge as a nurse. And so, you know, you, you don't necessarily have to be the mayor, but you might actually work on their campaign. And then they'll come to you if there's a healthcare problem that they're trying exactly. to figure out in their city. So it, it, there are a lot of different ways to, to, you know, a lot of different ways to touch people as a nurse um, and, and, and touch communities where you can really help out. And it doesn't necessarily involve you spending tens of thousands of hours doing something or, or having your face on billboards and on TV screens and stuff like that. You can still be in the background and be 
super helpful with what you're providing to the community. Exactly. And to finish my point that I lost in my head as I was talking earlier. All of us do um, that. It's amazing. Yes, That's how we work Lord. together. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kimberly and I finish each other's sentences sometimes. But when the physicians had hired a PR firm to do work to find out what the public thinks about physicians in elected office and what's interesting in their presentation about what they found, they basically said nurses are the most trusted profession and they could rule, but they're not, as Kimberly said, flexing their muscle. And why, And they were befuddled. Why are nurses not doing something with the power that they could wield? And they told them they could wield more power than you. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I can believe it. I can believe it. But uh, well, guys, this is this has been so much fun catching up and, you know, learning more about this candidate school and the webinars and things like that. Um, how can people get a hold of this information? I know we mentioned the, the Healing Politics Facebook page. Um, Sharon, you run a very successful podcast where people can get a hold of you there, too. Um, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that and, you know, but just ways that people can can reach out to you guys to find out more information would be great. Well, the best thing is to look up the Healing Politics um, site and you have to request to be a member. And we've got to have some way of knowing if you really are a nurse on there because you have to be approved to get in. Ultimately, we will have a website when we finalize our partnership with this academic institution. So we're kind of getting the cart before the horse right here. So um, I'll be utilizing my podcast beyond the mask in addition to this and i know you can go in and update your show mm -hmm. notes once we get that information for sure yeah so but and but just just wait it's going to be great <laughs> fantastic well sharon kimberly this has been such a pleasure uh, thank you guys for being on and and uh we'll definitely have to catch up again really soon and uh you know maybe maybe not on video we can <laughs> catch up and get some dinner or something sometime but uh you know thank you guys both for being here thank you so much bobby thanks bobby this was so much fun so terrific to see you yeah bring Good to see you along guys. Memory. Uh -huh. oh it <laughs> does <laughs> <laughs> all right well we'll see you guys uh next time on the show it makes total sense that nurses reach across the aisle to get things done we do this every day in the hospital and clinic settings, so it should translate to getting stuff done in the world of politics, too. I think that Sharon and Kimberly are really just at the tip of the iceberg here. We all know that when nurses are empowered, they can move mountains. That's going to do it for our show today. Make sure you check out the show notes for Sharon and Kimberly's contact info and the Healing Politics Facebook page. Take care of each other out there, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. If you haven't already subscribed and reviewed the show, I'd be honored if you took the extra time. It really helps to expand our reach and get the word out about the show. If you're a CRNA who is interested in sharing your story on our podcast, I'd love to have you. Please email me at bobby at oncallinvestments.com for more information. This episode was brought to you by On Call Capital. They are dedicated to helping providers like you develop passive income and generational wealth through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. Feel free to check out their website at www.oncallinvestments.com and subscribe to their free educational email series. You can find On Call Capital on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also check out our YouTube page where you'll find all of the show episodes along with other educational videos. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.